yeah this is my home yeah that's before two weeks i came to america so it's born everything that's only the gift they gave me <laughs> it's piece of wood but is that you know? a piece of wood from your home yeah that's a piece of wood wow yeah it's born so they burn it at all and if you do any action over against this stuff they will arrest you that's the reason uh, I can back there at this time. The abusive, like uh, human rights, and you can't do nothing. So, so this is not life at all. It was just one fine day that he came in, and uh, immediately upon coming in, um, the manager came and, in a very rude way, just said, um, "Oh, you don't need to punch in today. Just give me your badge, um, and you can go home." He gave everything to this company and all of a sudden he was let go. My dad clearly saw it was a case of discrimination because all these years there was no issues, no words. He just didn't feel that was right. So that's when we were introduced to CARE, so he just took a leap of faith and said, let's give this a try. Because we've seen a lot of silence from GOP leaders nationally and locally when it comes to the bullying tactics that this president has put forth, not just against members of the women, uh, Congresswomen of Color that we call the squad, but against immigrants, Muslims, Latinos in general, African Americans, minorities, from the very beginning when he started off with his Mexican rapist speech, all the way through the Muslim ban, what is happening at the border, the end of human rights as we know it, as it applies to people trying to seek legal asylum in this country, so on and so forth. That's more of my concern. And furthermore, it is about how he uses very purposefully these types of um, engineered uh, controversies in order to push and pull away from the issues that matter to the rest of us, healthcare, education, guns on the streets. That kind of distraction is a gimmicky type of politics that all Americans, left and right, must stand up to. Uh, where are we off to? We're off to immigration office. USCIS. Anytime one of our clients has a, an interview coming up, um, with exception to asylum claims, uh, they are all processed over there. I mean, it gives the address, it doesn't even say USCIS. Welcome to Illinois, welcome to the United States, welcome to Chicago. It's, it it doesn't say anything. A lot of people's hopes and dreams rest in that building. So. Without organizations like these, there are so many people out there who would not get help. And unfortunately, that leads to other consequences in their life. Um, if they're not able to get immigration benefits, they may not be able to find work. They may end up going back to their home country. But even in other contexts, in employment, in, in prison, travel, all of those areas, you know, being able to step out from our comfort zone and help those people who um, really have no other options. It makes me grateful that uh, there's organizations like CARE around the country because there's so many people that need our help and without us, they wouldn't have anyone. I see our work and the need for our work only growing in the years to come. What we've seen is that hate has become normalized in this country. Every week we hear of our schools be attacked, we hear of our places of worship under fire, our people uh, being killed because of the way they worship God. Something needs to change, and I feel the need for organizations like CARE to push the envelope and move the conversation forward to really address the divisiveness that's out there. CARE is providing a voice for uh, a community that needs it the most. We're doing the work of holding people accountable holding organizations accountable, holding other communities accountable, holding people accountable. And I feel like that's really important, especially to communities that don't have a voice, because how would they be able to do that if they don't have a voice? No matter how different we look or what beliefs we share, we're all the same because we're human. And that's what care means to me. It means acceptance, it means love. When we started this work, we were not welcome at any table. Islamophobia was so thick and so pervasive Today that's impossible. People know who we are. We've built our space at every important table in town and state and beyond. We're at every media table because of our consistent advocacy and presence. We want to be present in community spaces, in mosques, in schools, in centers. So it's very important that we're out there in the communities as much as we are inviting the community in our office. What do we want? Freedom! What do we want? Freedom! 
We are on State Street and we see everything that happens. We see the people who come out to support us or the people we go out to support. We're always fighting and we know that we're not alone and that's really reassuring. To see the solidarity among a vast majority of minority groups. I think that's always a constant throughout the ages. There's never ever going to be where young people in their invisibility feel that they cannot be a part of making something positive happen. I really do find uh, working with young people is invigorating. It's the fact they're making the choice to dive right into the work, whatever they can fit in. And for me, that in and of itself makes it where I have to step up just as well, because I don't want to let them down. It's uh, an amazing sight uh, when you realize that you have drastically changed the trajectory of someone's life by the actions that you've taken, by the work that you've put in. You know, discrimination can be so silent or some people could just let things go. But I think my dad... He believed. He Sorry, believed. Yeah. He believed in his, in his case. He believed in, in the fact that, you know, um, he, like, he could give voice to other people that don't really come out and mention uh, little things that happen around them that could actually essentially be, be big things, but um, they just keep silent. It's a win for like just civil rights, it's a win for all, um, you know, like uh, the immigrants. It's just, it might seem like a small win, but it's definitely a, a big, big step in the right direction. So I think, uh, you know, all is well that ends well. So. Yeah, I have a lot of uh, hopes in my heart, but I want to do it like action here in America. So the, my first uh, hopes to, to help uh, people then like my situation. So the, that's the main things. So it doesn't matter what's bra background these people, it doesn't matter what's religion, what's color, what's uh, culture they came from, because finally we are human and we should work together to make a difference. The year 2020, we've been looking forward to this year for generations. It speaks to a vision. It's just automatically emblematic of what is promising about our future. Not only does it mean how we need to be politically motivated to tackle the upcoming election, but also what sort of actions can we all take individually, collectively, as a community, as a nation, to move our country and our communities forward. Don't just stand by and watch things happen um, to you, to other people, to family members. Um, stand for something. Get out there, vote, try to make a difference, try to make a change. This is about us being involved in the civic engagement process, in the civil rights defense process, in the process of ensuring that our democracy is real. It means making sure no one ignores everything the Trump administration does, because it's very easy just to think that this is normal now, this is how things will always be, and there's nothing you can do about it. We have to be out there in the community, we have to be involved, we have to be seen. We have to be visible. If we are out there and we are present, then we can get a seat at the table and then we can make change. Doing everything that you can to be heard in the year 2020 because it's an election year, but it's also another year to keep fighting. Making America great again is not making America hate again. I think more than anything over the past 10 years, uh, it's better understood that the more we unite, the more we can really stand against anything.
Thank you.